Yo, what's up YouTube? Các bạn có khỏe không? Thì hôm nay mình sẽ làm một cái video rất là đặc biệt Chia sẻ về cái chuyện là mình sẽ chuyển đổi ngành qua ngành kế toán Và định hướng xa hơn của mình đó chính là mình sẽ trở thành một CPA kế toán công các bạn Thì hôm nay mình đã có hẹn online với một giáo sư đang làm việc à, tại trường đại học của mình Để trao đổi về về cái việc mà mình chuyển đổi ngành cũng như là những cái thắc mắc của mình về cái việc À, làm thế nào để có thể đậu được cái kỳ CPA và nhiều thứ liên quan tới CPA thì à, đây là một chủ đề cũng khá là mình nghĩ nó cũng khá là hay nếu các bạn là một du học sinh và có ý định muốn trở thành kế toán hoặc là kiểm toán hoặc CPA thì mình nghĩ chủ đề này nó sẽ một phần nào giải đáp được một số cái thắc mắc của các bạn Hi professor. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. I uh, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Okay. How are you All doing? Right. I must have turned my I I must have turned the headphone off. Oh. <laughs> I am doing well. How are you? Yeah, good. Sorry, I'm... I have so much light behind me. I was going to put a um a background on but then it still is too bright and it shows so this is fine professor now you are going to major in accounting i uh, registered in uh, bu with a mm -hmm. master business administration degree okay. but I, i want to change to uh accounting but because right now i have two options like the student court uh, told me that uh one the first one is uh i can study master in uh, accounting But I, before that, I have to study few uh, undergraduate classes. Intermediate accounting one and two. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, and the second choice is I can study a second uh, degree in accounting. Yet, yeah, but accounting. An undergraduate degree in accounting. Yes. Because my okay. first degree is uh, business administration. So then you would graduate. You could potentially graduate with an MBA and an accounting undergraduate degree, both. No. I just study one, one, one at a You're time. You're just going to do one, one or the other. Just one, yes. Okay. Well, you can get your MBA with a concentration in accounting, but you won't be able to sit for the CPA. Right now, I want to sit for a CPA, so I want to. So then you're going to do the the masters in science and accounting. Uh, so I want to uh hear your opinion, like which why is the best for me. I well, if okay, if you want to sit for the CPA, you're going to need the um. The, all the coursework in the masters uh, of accounting. So you'll get the master in science of accounting. So I have to study master in accounting. You would have to because you need thirty accounting, thirty um, hours of accounting in order to sit for the CPA, and that doesn't include your first financial and your managerial. What was your undergraduate degree in? Uh, business administration. Okay, so you have um, managerial accounting, financial accounting, and managerial accounting. You have both of those, and that's um, usually at a 100 or a 200 level. Did you? Where did you get your business administration degree? Did you get it from Bellevue University? Uh, no, I uh, I graduated in Vietnam. In Vietnam, okay. Oh, okay. I love pho. Oh, <laughs> it is my absolute favorite. Are you in Bellevue right now? Yeah. Okay. Do you know I pho? Yeah, of course. Out of can That's my favorite restaurant. Oh, really? Favorite restaurant, yes. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if you want, I can like invite you one one time, with, like to go to Eiffel because I I I live really near to Eiffel. So do I. Oh. I'm right off. Of, I'm off of Cape Heart. I'm like um, let's see, uh, uh the Fox Ridge. Fox. housing area off of 36 street but you have to come further down so like if you keep going past ifa to 36 street you know on cape heart yeah I, okay. i study uh i live in uh 23rd yeah 23rd street yeah so we probably only live five minutes away <laughs> so but we're, we're distance we're we're, we're Social distancing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but it is my absolute favorite. I have some food allergies, oh. and um, pho. I tell you, it has really made a huge difference. Yeah. 
that's that. So it's so delicious. Yeah, I, I'm glad and you I like I Vietnamese food. To, I think it, is his name is the owner Kevin. Is the owner of uh, iPhone? His name Kevin. What's his name? I, had, um, I forgot that. But he told me he said, "Oh, Fa will heal whatever is ailing you." <laughs> he goes, "If you're not feeling well, he goes, you call me and we'll get you." Some. <laughs> and so, but it's really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So you have your undergraduate degree in business administration. So you've had accounting. Now, do you know if they've counted? Did they count your managerial and your financial accounting to, for the um, MBA? Did uh-huh. you have to take MBA six hundred? Or are you? Have you started? No, not have yet. You started? I, I just because before I study uh, uh, for academic uh, classes, I I have mm-hmm. to study ESL class. Oh well, your English is very. It's very good. No, so I, thank, yes, thank it is very you. good. I could not eat. I lived in South Korea. Oh, for about eighteen months, little over a year, not quite, not quite a year and a half, and. Um, I was totally immersed in the culture, and I could speak a little bit, but I can remember answering the phone, and I said, I, I thought my accent and everything was perfect, and I said, you have a sale? And they go, American? <laughs> I'm like, how did you know? How? <laughs> so definitely, I have an accent when I speak, but yeah, that's that's been a while, but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed South Korea, but it's good yeah. to know the native uh, language when mm-hmm. you communicate with them. It helps, especially when I get lost in Seoul. <laughs> <laughs> I was always lost, and it's it's that city is more difficult to navigate. Seoul is a beautiful city, yeah, but, yeah. Um, it's so difficult to navigate. It's it's worse than New York, and you know um, there would be maybe eight lanes of traffic, four going one way, four coming the other way. And there were 12 lanes of traffic, even though there's only supposed to be eight. Wow. They're all squished in. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It was really kind of a little difficult to navigate sometimes. But I, as you can see, I survived. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, um, yeah, and I, I could not, even living there over a year, I could not even imagine taking classes, you know, the, the Korean language. Yeah. So. I can remember coming home, getting, um, I was, we, we flew into San Francisco and we had to go through customs and one of the customs agents said, welcome home. (laughs) And I said, I understood that (laughs) without even thinking. I could, I could understand every word without thinking because you know, when you're, well, you, it's, it's hard work Yes. when you're trying to communicate in a second language. Yes. And I would have to concentrate, and I'd be so, you know, um, intensely concentrating that I would miss what's going on around me because I had, you know, in order to understand, yes. I just really had to concentrate. So when we got into San Francisco and he said, welcome home, I said, oh, I didn't even have to think about it. I just knew what he said. <laughs> but I really enjoyed my time overseas. So I congratulate you for taking coursework and um, even a, a master's in a second language. That's excellent. So no, but your English is very good. Thank you, Professor. All right. So now did they go through your what coursework you need for the MBA yet? Or are you just going to be going through that process now? Uh, because they... right now I, I, I still I, I still not decided uh, which way I, I, I gonna go. So I, okay. I, I want to hear some advice be, be, before I, I switch the major. Well, if you want to sit for the CPA, you might as well just go for the MSA, the Master's in Science and Accounting. Now, if when you are finished with the Master in Science and Accounting, when you finish that, you wouldn't need that many more classes to finish up your MBA if you truly wanted your MBA. But with your business undergraduate degree and the fact that you want to sit for the CPA, I would go for the MSA. That does mean that you are going to have to take Intermediate Accounting 1 and Intermediate Accounting 2. But you might have done that anyhow, because let's say you didn't want to, let's say you like accounting, um, but you didn't want to sit for the CPA. Okay, so let's say that you decide, I don't want the CPA, but I want to get a concentration in accounting. So you could get your MBA with a concentration in accounting, but you wouldn't be able to sit for the CPA. Yeah. Okay, but if you get a concentration in accounting, you're still going to need intermediate accounting one and intermediate accounting two. Okay. So the best way right now for me is uh, I'm going to study MSA, right? Yep. If you definitely, if you know you want to go for the CPA, then you um, MSA, go the MSA route. 
the next thing is have them review your transcripts as soon as possible. Because if you, you, you definitely, well, are you going to take day classes or evening classes? Uh, evening classes. Evening, okay. If you take day classes, intermediate accounting one is offered in the fall. And I'm, I'm assuming you're going to take them in the classroom, right? Yes. Okay. That makes it a little bit easier, especially with um, asking questions right away. Yes. And I think that's definitely better, especially for, you know, well, your English is really good. But, you know, if you have questions, get them answered right away. And that way you won't struggle with the language or with accounting because you can ask any questions you can yeah. immediately. Yeah, okay. because because in in a academic environment, there's a lot of terms. is It's very hard to understand. Even though they just uh, daily words, but in the academic uh, academic uh, uh, environment, it's very it have a different meaning. So right. Sometimes right. I I don't understand that. Yeah. Well, I think it is better in the classroom, anyhow. Just my opinion, but yeah. <laughs> but I have a lot of students who do really well online, but I think it's easier in the classroom. Okay, so if you wanted to take um, intermediate accounting. It's offered in the day and the fall, and in the winter, it's offered in the evening. Intermediate two is offered during the day in the winter and in the evening in the spring. Because I'm teaching intermediate two right now, I'm using Zoom. That's why I have a headphone because it makes it a little bit clearer. Yes. So um, when I just use my speaker from my computer, it's okay, but it's not as clear. And and sometimes I'll then I'll go ahead and record what I'm talking about so that way I can post it to the classroom oh. so I want it to, to be clear but uh, yeah so it kind of depends on let's say that well, I don't know how many classes you want to take but if you wanted to start some graduate work already you could take a day class and an evening and to start taking intermediate accounting one in the fall but it's up to you now who is your advisor do you have an advisor you might not have an advisor yet oh I have one Uh, you have one. Her name is Holly. Holly. Yeah. H O L L Y. Uh, H A E. Uh, I don't remember. I L E Y. Haley. Haley. Yeah. Sorry. Haley. Okay. Oh, that's all right. I'm not that familiar with some of our advisors because they just moved around a little bit. I'm gonna let my dog outside. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, of course, professor. Because they um, switch my student advisor a lot. Say that one more time. Uh, I don't know why, but they switch my uh, student advisor a lot. So sometimes I confuse who is my ad advisor. I understand. My um, I have twin boys, so I have two boys, and they're same age. And my one has had he they're sophomores at Bellevue University, yes. and they've gone through three advisors, each of them. So six different people. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why, because I would think advising would be. I would love to advise. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I would go with um, the MSA. Do you have any experience about CPA? I have my CPA. Oh. Um. So you need if you, you can go out to um, the AICPA's website, NAS. Um, Let me let me look really quick to get the exact website, and I will share that with you. Can you see this website? This is NASBA, and um, they have the different boards of accountancy. They it has on here about you know taking the exam. Here's the exams over here. Licensing education. So this would be a good and uh, see it's nasba.org. Do you know the requirements? Do uh, I have to sit for a CPA exam? Yeah, the big requirement is 30 hours of upper-level accounting classes. Graduate graduate accounting courses do count. So, um, but like you're in, they don't count your 100 or 200 level courses, but they count your intermediate one, intermediate two. You can take uh, and cost. You can take some of those accounting classes at the graduate level. And in fact, our MSA when you finish the MSA program you do qualify to sit for the CPA. Um, make sure, jot down this website, the nasba.org. Yeah, and then see where it has exams. You can look through to 
you know, a little bit about what's going on there. And then if you want your license, it talks about the um, different boards of accounting. Every state has their own board of accounting. So ours is the Nebraska Board of Accounting. So depending on where you um, would like to sit for the CPA, like if you want to sit here in Nebraska, um, just click on Nebraska and it'll pull up the requirements. Now, once you once you get your CPA, and let's say you, you say I, you might think I don't want to live in Nebraska. Um, maybe you want to move to West Coast, Oregon, you know, California. Then, when you get to those states, you just apply for reciprocity, and so you only ever have to sit for the CPA once. And so, once you pass, you pass. Oh. So it's mean I, and then I, you could work anywhere in the United States, but every state you go to, you have to apply for reciprocity. Okay, so it's mean I don't have to renew the CBA license every year. Oh, you do have to renew it. Yes. So, but I don't have to uh, study again. No, once you pass the CPA, you don't have to take the CPA again. Okay. You just have to make sure you keep. What, the, what we call CPEs, Continuing Professional Education. So you need, once you pass your CPA, you need 40 hours of CPEs every year. It's really 80 hours every two years, but um, we usually try to do 40 a year. Conferences, you'd go to conferences, and um, even a college course counts toward that. But they would just want to make sure that you continue with your education and stay current in the field. Like if I want to have a CPA, a CPA license, do I have to have a experience in working? Yes. If you want to have a license, like you can take the CPA and pass it. Yes. Okay, now you're certified, but you're not licensed. Okay. Then you need the work experience. Yes. Um, two years in a CPA firm or um, it's either four or five years working under a CPA in just any company. So you can get you can become licensed without working in a CPA firm as long as you're being supervised by a CPA. So uh, do they require a specific experience uh, for that? Like I have to have a uh, account a public account uh, have to be a, a public accountant uh, to become licensed you need two years in public accounting or five years in any industry as long as you're working under a CPA so so for example I did work in a CPA firm for two years but let's say I didn't do that let's say that I decided to um, go to work for Conagra okay so if I'm an accountant at Conagra and I am working, and, and my boss is a CPA, I can still become licensed. But it takes five years, not just two. Oh. And that's relatively new. I think that's only been that way for the last five years or so. But you don't have to be licensed. You can just put on your um, resume that you're certified, not licensed. So it means I just need to pass a CPA exam? Passing the CPA, after you pass the CPA, you do have to take an ethics exam. It's a take-home. They send it to you. I think you still have to pay like 50 bucks for it. But um, it's a, And then you pass the ethics piece, and now you are certified. Okay. But you're not licensed. So. And, and then, so there's a lot of CPAs out there who, they're certified. So you can't say, I'm a CPA. You can say, I passed the yes. CPA, yes. or I'm certified, right? Um, and then you, where after you get your work experience, then you become licensed. So, are there any difference be between like you have a license or and you don't have a license? Yes. In order to um, perform audits and even to own your own firm and do audits, you would have to become be licensed. You can't audit without having a license. So you can prepare taxes, but even if you prepare taxes, you can't say that you're a CPA until you're licensed. So that's what a lot of CPAs want to do. They want to become licensed. They put in their time, 
And when they retire, they retire early, like at maybe 45 or 50, open up their own small shop and just do taxes as a CPA. I'm really curious about a CPA do, uh, working in a tax area. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I'm not a big tax person. I'm audit, financial accounting and audit. But tax, it's just you just have to follow the tax code. But if you want in tax, if you um, start taking your accounting classes in the fall or winter, we have a tax program that's called VITA, V-I-T-A. V-I-T-A. And, V-I-T-A. And um, as a major in accounting, you'll be getting these emails. We, we put you into. And you will learn how to prepare taxes, and you'll even prepare taxes for people as a volunteer. So that's what VITA is, Volunteer Income Tax Associate or Assistance. Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. And um, the university sponsors this program. And so all the training comes in. It's at no charge to you. It, you are a volunteer. You usually have to work one day a week from the end of January through... I think the end of, I think it's the end of March. Mark. And you might have to work one week in April. They usually don't go all the way up to the deadline. Um, but, yeah, I think it goes through the end of March. I'm not sure. This year it had to cancel early. It oh. closed early because of the COVID-19. Yes. But, um, yeah, but that, it, that's a good training program. So that way you would see if you like tax, too. You yes. get trained free, and then you do have to volunteer your time. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the training. Because, yeah, but it, it, and it looks great on your resume. Yes, because of now course. you have experience. Yes. So, like uh, in the MSA program, do we have any opportunity uh, to uh, internship? You can you can um, take on an internship. Yeah, uh, you'd have to go to career services. And tell them that you're interested in finding an accounting position that would qualify for an internship. And then what you would do is um, apply for that job. I could even help you with your, you know, well, career services will help you with resume too. But you could also send it to me and we could do one last look at it. Um, And you could apply for the job, and then we'll review the job qualifications and see more. almost every accounting job will count as an internship. It doesn't just have to say internship. It could be any part-time or temporary job that's new to you where you're gaining knowledge. Do you know when is the, the perfect time to take uh, the CPA exam? Like, like after, after, immediately after I graduate my program? Well, I would even probably start maybe a semester or two before, start sitting, for, if you can. I mean, depending on your coursework, of course, because it's, it's a lot of studying. Um, but depending on your coursework, you could, I, I believe you can start taking the CPA when you're within nine hours. I would have to look that up, but I think it's at least within nine hours of graduating. It might even be more. I, I don't understand that. Can you explain it a little bit? You can start to take the CPA. There's four parts. Yes. You can start to take the CPA, like one part or two parts, before you graduate. Oh, really? I can't do that. Because But you have to be within a semester or two of graduation. And NASBA, what you would do when you get close to graduating, let's say within um, two or three semesters of graduating, you could... Um, we hear what I have, NASBA, you can go ahead, they review your transcripts. Um, you'll go into the where this says exams, and become, you go in there and you would register and register to take the CPA. They'll go ahead and review your transcripts and tell you what coursework you still need in order to sit for the CPA. Oh, And you might be able to, t and then you might be able to sit even before you graduate. So, do I have to pay any fee for register for that? That I'm not. I, I think the CPA exam is a little pricey, 
Um, I'm not sure if you have to pay before or after you have your transcripts reviewed. You're allowed to have your transcripts reviewed one time at no charge. Oh. Ne Nebraska actually pays. See, NASBA is national. All the states, we all the states um, will use NASBA, and Nebraska actually pays for one one review of your transcripts by NASBA. And what NASBA will do is they'll review all your transcripts. And then they'll send you a report that tells you if you have any deficiencies that you need to take care of before you sit for the exam. Uh, last time you mentioned that in the library, they have a, a CPA review book uh, with a 2019 edition? 2019, I believe. 19? But I checked the library, they just have like 2018. It might have been 2018, 2019. We might not have received our 2020. Or, um, does it just say 2018? Yes. They're supposed to be on reserve. So you check, You were able to check it out? Yes. Ask them if there's anything on reserve. Because I walked them over and I put them on reserve. So you're supposed to, I didn't know that you were able to check them out. I thought you had to use them there. So they didn't have anything on reserve? No, because I, when I check like, in the library online, they, they don't show any uh, information about that. No, I, um, I walked about, I thought it was the 2019, not 2018. In fact, I'm almost positive it was the 2019. I'll contact the library and find out. But we might, um, because we get, we get the books in the summer. I don't remember when I when I brought them over. My office is really close to the library, so I just walk out the back door of the building and swing around into the library. And I re and I remember carrying them over. I did have help. I thought it. I thought that they were 2019 because I don't have any. I don't have the the 2019 in my office. But we usually get them in the summer, and then I take them over to the library and put them on reserve. Oh, so every year, be, be, be you gonna update the. Every year, Glime sends us them because we, you should, and um, I will find out about this as well, you should be able to um, also use some of their software. So I'll find out. Let me go ahead and I'll send an email to see if you're able to use any software if we have, an, if we have a login. But the university pays for the Glime books, and then I'll see if there's any software that's associated with it as well for you. So, to sit for a CBA exam, is it too hard? Is it too hard? Yeah. No, if you study for it, you'll be fine. <laughs> because you do, it is one you have to study for. Because I see the, it's just like around 50% uh, like can pass the exam. Yeah. But that that's, that's usually first time. And then you could, let's say that you take your first part. I had a student that was so disappointed. She was an A student. I mean, she had A's in intermediate accounting, and she studied hard. And she took the first part, and she failed it. And I'm like, oh. I said, that is just so odd. She goes, maybe I just can't do it. I said, I know you can do it. And um, I said, how were you studying? And, we, you know, we talked about how she was studying. And I told, uh, so we made some changes to how she was studying. She took it again, same part, but in one mo one month later, and she passed it and got it in the eighties. So she mm. went from not passing it to getting one of the highest scores on it. Mm. It was just the way she was studying that wasn't helping her. Um, but you know, you get nervous, and so we, you know, you can kind of tweak that. And then she passed the other three. So, but she failed the part the first time and she was going to give up I'm like what because it is expensive I have to admit I mean if you're if you but if you can get a job here you, your employer might even pay for the exam so there's just different things that yeah so I said if there's any way you can sit for it again and when she when she sat again she's like oh I, she came in she was so happy tears of joy oh, were no. right down her cheeks. <laughs> but yeah so it's doable we do joke, though, that after you pass the CPA and then you start working in accounting, yes. we joke that CPA stands for can't pass again. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a joke because think about it. You know, you study all these topics. You pass the CPA. Then let's say that you decided to become a tax professional. You work in tax for a couple of years. You forget all this <clears throat> auditing stuff. And then you have to take the C- if If you would have to take the CPA, we say it, it's can't pass again because you've already become an expert in a specific field. <laughs> so the other parts, it makes it more difficult. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to st- you'd have to study again. <laughs> so that's the joke in accounting. Yeah, that certified public accounting, that CPA is can't pass again. <laughs> oh, can you share a little about uh, a little bit about the method to study? Well, I, I would have to see how you do in cl- how you do it in class because there's a lot of different ways that you can study. So it kind of depends how you if you're how you're successful in intermediate accounting. So I really couldn't help you with a good approach for you. Um, the one thing that I would say that if you start studying, given that the um, the test is online, I mean it, the, you have to go to a testing site and complete it on the computer. That once you start getting like okay, so let's say you study the Glime books. You know, when you go through the content. Um, so you start studying. Before you actually take the CPA, the, you know, one, the, your first part, it's a good idea to maybe use an um, online study tool so that you're used to navigating everything on the computer. So that's the one overall thing that I, I recommend to students. But as for actually getting into the details and studying, it's going to depend on the person. But intermediate accounting one and intermediate accounting two and then advanced accounting, that's a big chunk of the CPA exam. So can you help me to uh, find out about the, 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 the software or the tool of this book? Is it like student can use it or not? Well, I'm going to find out. That's the email I'm going to uh, um, send to find out if Glime, if we have any... Um, computerized software that students can use. But you're really not ready to completely immerse yourself in study yet either. You haven't had intermediate accounting one or two. Usually after you have intermediate one or two is the time to start maybe getting a plan of how to approach the CPA. Yeah, because right now it's like I'm a, I'm in the middle of the mess up, so I don't know where, what it is. And where am I? So I, I want to try to look yeah. what does CBA exam look like. Yeah, and by the time you get through, um, I know I teach intermediate accounting one and two. And the software that I chose, um, we use the Wiley Plus. It's, it's um, well, I use the intermediate accounting textbook from Wiley, the publishing company from Wiley. And their electronic software, Wiley Plus, is very similar to the CPA, the way the questions, the way you fill out the forms and complete the financial statements and journalize. It's it's very similar to what you would do in a CPA exam. Anything else? Um, I think that's all I, I need to know now. Okay. And you can always email me. Last week, the last two weeks were really difficult for me because um, we were in midterms. Yeah. And because our on our in our in class courses came online, and I'm te- I teach my online. I mean, I teach my residential classes using Zoom. So Tuesday night, I'm online from like about five o'clock until nine nine thirty, and I have all these midterm exams that were coming in, and so the last two weeks were really difficult. But going forward, I think I'm on. I think. Until we get to the end of the semester. Then the end of the semester will be really difficult again. But right now, um, you can, I mean, email me anytime and, and yeah. we can always yeah. chat again. I can understand that because, like, right now in a quarantine time, so all of the professors have to work online. And, yeah, I, I see you guys very busy. Yeah. Now, I, only, I my residential class is the one that I... We, we do through Zoom, and I have all my students in the class, and then I'm sharing my screens and whiteboards and solutions, and we're working through. It actually goes by really fast, but I was also teaching um, gra- the graduate-level accounting information systems class, 
and we were going through SAP, which is a really difficult accounting software. It's a lot of fun, but it's a difficult software to navigate. And so I'm trying. So I'm working online, trying to find students' problems. They're like the system. It, 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 the system won't let me do it. I said, it's not letting you do it because you made a mistake. Yeah. We have to go back and find the mistake. <laughs> so, and it can be, it can take a long time to find the mistake. Yeah. But, yeah, but we just finished up that program. Now we're going into forensic software, so they're going to be much happier. <laughs> That's a forensic software is actually a lot of fun. And it's not very difficult, but it's a lot of fun. So I think they're going to be much happier. I'm going to have happier students. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me know. Take a look at this NASBA website. Yes, um, I will take a look around and let me know if you have any questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your time. Oh no problem. Yeah. No problem. So if I have any question, I I'm gonna. Uh, email to you. Okay, that sounds good. Yes. And we can either have a Zoom meeting or I was I I was I didn't know if uh, I thought it might be better in case I had to look something up, but I'm glad I we did do the Zoom so that way you can see the NASBA website. Yes. And everything. And yeah, we can do Zoom or we can just talk by phone. Either way. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor. All righty. Okay. Well, you have a good evening. Yes, you too. But okay. but you know, I, I would invite you to go to Eiffel one time. Okay, How do you think? we can, we can meet there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. No, idea. that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you no. so much, Professor. Okay. Again. Thank. Oh, I do want to make sure. I, how do you, is your name pronounced? Tian. Yes. Rồi, bây giờ mình cũng <cười> không muốn nói nhiều nữa tại vì video này nó quá dài rồi. Thì cũng uh, mong là những cái thông tin mà mình và giáo sư trao đổi sẽ giúp ích được các bạn phần nào. Còn bây giờ thì xin chào và hẹn gặp lại. Peace out.